Well, the day has finally come. I'm so excited to be here and, and happy that all of you are here from around the world. And so for that, I should say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. And for those of you in Australia, it's already tomorrow, if you can believe that. Well, and uh, happy Canada Day, by the way, for all of our friends up in Canada. So my name is Jeff Rasmussen, and welcome to this special edition of our Legacy Family Tree webinars. A couple of weeks ago, I received a fantastic obituary for one of my ancestors, Lorenzo Brown, and I've been anxious to enter all of that new information into my personal legacy family file. Well, that day has finally come, and so once again, I'm happy that you can all be here with me. Now, I haven't practiced or made up any special examples for you today. I'm hoping to have this be uh, as impromptu and uh, live as possible. So I'm simply going to just take this obituary and add it to legacy just as I would any time. So hopefully as we do this, you might pick up on one or two uh, new ideas that you can apply to your own research. Well, in just a minute, we'll get started. But when we conclude, I'll have some door prizes to give away and a special thank you gift for all of our live attendees. And I'll announce our upcoming webinars, and then hopefully we'll have time to continue with your questions. So these are the steps I usually take when working with an obituary. First, since there is no proof without truth, we'll begin by getting the source clipboard set up. Then we'll analyze and add any new information that we find. And using the clipboard, we'll add the citation to that new information. We'll first use this obituary here on your screen of Lorenzo D. Brown that hopefully by now you've all had a chance to print so you can follow along. A special thanks. Uh, goes out to Donna of Hastings, Nebraska, who uh, retrieved uh, the obituary for me on site. No, not everything's online yet, so I had to turn to uh, some real on-site research for this one. So when we're done with that, we'll take a look at how to deal with an online obituary, and today we'll use the genealogybank.com website for that. All along, remember that this is live, unscripted, and unplanned. It's kind of like watching the Watch Jeff reality show. So I hope I don't make too many mental mistakes. But please use your chat window to send me any messages as we go along. Now, uh, as always, if, if for some reason there's some kind of interruption with your audio or you're not able to see what I'm showing, uh, the GoToWebinar company recommend that you just uh, sign out uh, of, your, of the webinar and just come right back in. And from what I understand, uh, that usually takes care of any of those kind of problems. So anyways, um, I hope I don't make too many mental mistakes with all of you watching me here today. Uh, and since I'll be doing this live with my real family file, I'll be using the same techniques and shortcuts and analysis tools that I personally use every day. Therefore, I would say that this would uh, appeal to those with an intermediate to advanced levels of expertise. However, if you're more of a beginner, please stay with me because you will learn lots about uh, the things that you can do in Legacy Family Tree. And when you're ready to use them, uh, those features, then, uh, then you'll be ready for them. So with that, let's begin. So I'm going to switch over to my personal Legacy uh, Family file. You should be able to see on the screen now. Uh, Lorenzo D. Brown. Notice he is my half first cousin four times removed. And if I look at his pedigree, you'll notice he is a descendant of one of my favorite ancestors. And in, in our previous webinars on adding a death certificate and adding a marriage record, you've become a little bit familiar with this family. Remember that Lorenzo, he was the, uh, the gentleman who had five wives. Okay, and so in the marriage uh, webinar, uh, I showed you how uh, we recorded a couple of those. Okay, and so it's Lorenzo Brown's obituary that I was able to locate, and I was able to locate it a little bit easier because I, you know, I had a, a death date here, and and with that, and and uh, his chronology that I've created. Oh, just a second. This is a leftover from our Wednesday webinar where I was showing how to uh, turn on the historical backgrounds, background timelines. Okay, so uh, using his timeline here, I was able to 
first first of all identify where I might find his obituary. So you can see that I've located, well he's been in Clay County, Nebraska for quite some time just based on what I've learned here in, uh, in his chronology. And the very last event that I've located him, it was on a census in 1920, and I wasn't able to find him in 1930. And so because of that, you know, that's how I was able to come up with this death date. And so somewhere between those uh, 10 years, he probably died, and so that's, that's kind of where I started. Um, let's go ahead and uh, open up Lorenzo Brown's screen. And as I mentioned earlier, the very first thing that I will do when working with any document is set up the source clipboard. Now, if any of you are new and you're not quite yet familiar with a source clipboard or adding a source, um, for every piece of information that you add, you always need to also add its source or the citation. Where did I find this information? And you could go through the steps of clicking on the source button and, and just go from there. And you can learn all about that in the training video that we have online for you uh, in the Legacy for Beginners video. Uh, just go and go there and watch the sources section and you'll get uh, the overview of working with that. But I, I like to use the source clipboard over here on the left hand side because it, it just works uh, a lot faster when, uh, when adding these citations. Okay. All right, so the first step in setting up the source clipboard is to click on the triangle here. And this is what my source clipboard currently looks looks like. Looks like the uh the other day uh I was actually adding in a uh, an obituary for someone who died in Anacardis. I finally learned how to pronounce that. And uh, so that's what my clipboard is set up with right now. But I, I'm going to start all over, and so as we so we don't get confused, I'll just click on the clear clipboard down here at the bottom, and that puts everything back to uh, the defaults here. Again, uh, I'm just doing this just as I would any other day, except today I've got lots of helpers with me, so I appreciate y'all being here again. So let's go to step one. Click here to select or change the master source to site. This pulls up my master source list. Now, just like I've done previously, I've got this uh, source list filtered to just showing me my, uh, well, oh, I didn't really want my tagged ones. I was going to have it just filtered to just show me my source writer style sources. If I turn off that filter, you can see I've got 1,137 master sources here. Uh, so you can, you can play with these filters over here. But before I go and add uh, a new master source for you know where I found this obituary. I first want to uh, search my master source list to make sure I haven't already typed in the information about the newspaper previously. And uh, as I've shown before, my master source list, uh, because of the way that I've done the data entry, is arranged by uh, jurisdiction, and so it makes it really easy for me to be able to locate any uh, source. Uh, Luann's asking, will this webinar be available to watch for a time after this presentation? Yes, I did remember to hit the record button, okay, and so uh, it will be available in the archives. So you probably don't have to take step-by-step -step notes if that makes you feel more at ease. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, see if I've already typed in this newspaper before. Now, the newspaper was, well, I think I've got the image right here somewhere. Okay, so here we go. This is the actual... Uh, obituary that I received in an email. Okay, so uh, Donna in Nebraska, she did the research and she sent me this obituary. It uh, looks like she embedded, probably using her photo software, she embedded the title of the, the newspaper here at the top and the date and the page number. One thing that I forgot to ask, and, and I, I probably should have done this before I asked her about this, is is to please send me a copy of the entire newspaper page. That way I get more of the context and possibly the, you know, the full title up there at the top with even the location. And so for those of you that have asked about that, this is from uh, Fairfield in Clay County, Nebraska. So with that information, let's go and see if I've already typed in a, uh, the Fairfield Ox, I guess you would say. And in my master source list, and it, if I had, it would be underneath Nebraska and Clay County and Fairfield. 
And let's just kind of look at what I've got. Oh, I've only got three master sources there for that, and not one of them is uh, this the this newspaper title. Um, so we get to add a brand new master source, and that's exciting to do. So let's click on the Add button here. And this is the step one of using the source writer. Hopefully you've all had a chance to experiment with this a bit. And let's scroll down to, well, you could just type in what you're looking for up here. I tend to just go down then this list and look for obituary. Okay, so we're in the O's. Now notice that you don't see obituary here in the list. Well, obituary would fall under the newspaper categories, and, and so that's where you would uh, normally click on. However, if you didn't think of that, right up here under what kind of source do you want to cite, you could just type in what you're uh, you know, using and click on the search button. And up comes the list of the possible templates that would work uh, for an obituary. Oh, Kenneth, sorry about that. Uh, I still don't have the pronunciation of anachronism. Okay, and uh, Lois reminds uh, she's giving uh, me some good information that the actual title of this is the Fairfield Auxiliary. Okay, so that would be another reason uh, why I would want to make sure to get the the full page instead of just a little snippet of it. Okay, so that's one tip is to go right here and type in what you're looking for. This is another tip I'm going to give you that I don't know if I've ever shown this to anybody before. Uh, I have in, in smaller situations, I guess, but if any of you have used Evidence Explained by Elizabeth Schoen Mills, you know that her book is, well, our source writer is based on her book. Uh, and in her book, all of the different uh, templates, I guess, are arranged by section number. And so I just jotted down uh, the section number for the obituary here. You can actually type in the section number from her book right here, when you click on search, it should give me a list. Do you see that right here? This is giving us a list of those templates from section 14.22 of Evidence Explained. And so you could uh, you can search for any template that way. And uh, Anna is saying, or Anna is saying, very cool. Yes, it is. But even more cool, Anna, is you could also just type in a page number. Now I didn't write that one down, so I'm not sure. Which, which page this is on, but you could just type in a page number, click on search. Let's, I don't even know if anything's going to show up. Okay, nothing for page 385. But uh, so those are a couple of tips that you might not know any other way and unless you come to a webinar. So thanks, all of you. So I'm going to just go in uh, my old-fashioned style and just click on newspapers and just answer a couple of questions here. And I could select online archives issued by the publisher. I would do that if the Fairfield Auxiliary, <laughs> hard word to say, uh, issued uh, the newspaper online. Did I find this in an online database? No. Was this an online image? I would use that more if it were something like uh, genealogybank.com. The one I'm going to do in this case is I'll use the print edition, even though it was something that uh, Donna emailed to me. Um, it it's came right from the, the microfilm or the original. And so uh, you know, if, if you use all of the theory that, that you learn in Evidence Explained, it's OK to use print edition for this um, edition. So let's go ahead and click on Go to Step 2. And based on those the choices that I made in Step 1, it's going to Give me these fields here. Now, I usually leave the source list name uh, until the end. And so let's go ahead with the location state. So this came from Nebraska. Now, when it comes to the location city, it says, well, I can't read the whole uh, example text right here. So if you just kind of move your cursor on top of the field name over here, it will give you everything. So it says, type the city or the lowest jurisdiction if it's not a part of the title. Well, our title, let's go back over here. Our title is the Fairfield Auxiliary. So let's type that in in the title, first of all. So Fairfield, so, you know, I'm going to have to 
go and actually find out exactly how that is spelled. Uh, I